Hello and welcome to The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry, discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and glue holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's keep with our episode. So today, we're moving on to one of the first parties, and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft. Now Microsoft in a weird, interesting sort of place. There's a lot of pressure on them because of a lack of first party presence over recent years, and the few that they've put out have failed to reach the acclaim that we've seen in similar titles on the PlayStation platform. So there's a lot of pressure there. There hasn't been many, the quality hasn't been quite up to snuff, um, and there's a lot that Microsoft needs to address in this space. So in this episode of The Insider, we're going to talk about what is going on at Microsoft and how that impacts E3 2018. Weapons free. Contact. So let's first look at some of the sure things that Microsoft likely has in store for E3 2018. Now the first of those kind of links to a rumour that emerged courtesy of the Walmart leak and it relates to Gears of War. Now I'm going to bundle Gears of War and Halo together here because they are the two primary most popular IP in the Microsoft stable. The rumour is that Gears of War 5 is on the way, and it likely is, but that it's on the way to E3 2018. But there's also some rumours out there existing about Halo 6 or whatever the next Halo core Halo game is. And I feel like there's only place for one of those, one of those two each year. They don't want to go too top heavy. Microsoft is desperate to make a statement and say, hey, we've got all these things. Here's your big hitters. Here's new IP. Here's this, that, that, and the other. But to go with Halo and Gears in the same presentation, it's certainly going to wow people at the time. But I think it's going to be to their detriment down the line. Expect to see one of Halo and Gears at E3 2018. On the flip side, we've got some guaranteed things that will be there. Crackdown 3, it has to be. The game's got to come out this year. It was meant to come out late last year. It was meant to be in line with the launch of the Xbox One X and then failed to do so. You've got to assume that now, in 2019, the game is finally going to release and they need to show quite a bit about it. People are quite sceptical, quite cynical about this game and they haven't really given us too much reason to be inspired. So he's hoping that what they show is of really awesome quality. Another rumor, something that broke from the Walmart leak was Forza Horizons 5, which is a really weird one given that our most recent Forza Horizon game was Horizon 3. Surely that's, that's a typo and we're gonna see Forza Horizon 4. It is a Horizon year and those two, Forza Motorsport and Horizon have been alternating for the last few years. So expect to see Forza in some way, shape or form at E3 2018. And lastly, I'm expecting new IP. Phil Spencer came out last year and said they were looking to acquire new studios to develop new IP for the Xbox platform. And it makes sense that they start showing some of those this E3. There's a lot of pressure there. They've had a year now to work on those projects on top of the fact that he was poaching teams, poaching teams that had cool ideas. So the project was already in gestation even before Microsoft stepped in. So surely that game is at a point now where it can be shown. Hopefully there's a few of them. But we'll talk more about some of those 50-50 games next. So next up, we'll talk about some of those 50-50 games, some of those games that may or may not be present at E3 2018 for Microsoft. And the first among those is, like linking to that last segment, one of Gears or Halo. Like I said before, I feel like there can only be enough room for one of these two major first party titles. They are, one of, uh, they are two of their tent poles. There's only enough room for one. They need to dedicate a lot of time to the other. Surely that one game is coming out this year, so the other can just take it easy for one more year, release in 2019, 2020, whatever it happens to be, 
and just put a little bit of space and have something guaranteed and viable for the following years. It's really important to the ongoing development support that's being given to that Xbox One platform. Another one is Fable. Now Fable by many is kind of thought to be a little bit dead. Um, Lionhead was shuttered, the IP, uh, some of the work they were doing with the franchise, gone. But there has been a lot of talk, a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors, a lot of love from fans, a lot of things going into a reboot of the Fable franchise. And there's some, da uh, there's some information out there that supports the possibility that this may in fact be the case. Playground Studios, the ones responsible for Forza Horizon 4, uh, sorry, 3, 4, maybe soon 4, whatever it happens to be, um, the Forza Horizon sub-franchise have splintered off into two teams and one of them is working on an RPG, a kind of very Western open world RPG. And Fable fits the bill. They are a European developer, so they've got that same sort of sense of humor in theory to what Lion had had. There's a lot of things here that kind of fit the bill nicely and we're due for Fable and they need something like that that's not a ultra violent shooter. Fable fits the bill, he's hoping we see it. And then compounding that, uh, all those things are those new IP. I spoke about it in the first segment and I feel like it's guaranteed that we're gonna see a couple, but we need to see more. How many, that's a, that's a big question. I feel like we're gonna get at least three, maybe four new IP. Add to that the, the possibility of maybe seeing Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is not a new IP, this is, it is a sequel to a, an established franchise now, but it is wonderful. It is new, it looks great, and it's probably one of those 50-50 games because we just don't know how far along in development the game is. A small studio like that, it's kind of scattered all over the world. It's hard to get the pieces together. I'm really, really hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful it's 2019. I've got a, a writer's draft, a, a patch draft, all writing on this game, but um, it's, it's beautiful, and I really, really hope it's there. Falling apart. We're still not stopping. There was some scuttlebutt last year when Scalebound, the project formerly by Platinum Games, was kind of shuttered and killed off. That Scalebound, oh sorry, that Platinum kind of owed Microsoft something. Now in this game's business. No one owes anyone anything really. But it did seem as though in the eyes of some that there was this, this platinum developed game to kind of make good on the fact that Scalebound didn't quite work out. It's not happening. Platinum does whatever Platinum wants. Platinum goes where people are going to buy their games. And at the moment, as evidenced by Nier Automata last year, that's PlayStation, that's Nintendo. People on, in, on those platforms seem to really gravitate towards their games and Xbox gamers, for whatever reason, haven't really been doing that in the same incredible numbers. So I don't think we're going to expect to see anything else from them in that space. But outside of that, the sky's the limit for what Microsoft could possibly be doing this year. Will we see a, an Insomniac developed Sunset Overdrive 2? Who knows? There's, there's so many different bits and pieces that could possibly be there that need to be discussed. We're going to see new information on games that have released, such as Sea of Thieves. There's so many possibilities there. I really do believe sky's the limit when it comes to Microsoft and anything's possible. Get yourself excited. So those are my predictions for Microsoft at E3 2018. If you enjoyed them, if you agreed with them, if you disagreed with them, please sound off in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what games you think I might've missed. 
other games that I maybe didn't get enough, give enough credit to, or games that maybe I gave too much credit to. Let me know down, down below here. I want to know what you're thinking. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. All those buttons are down here as well, and hit that notification bell so you're alerted to every video as it goes live. That includes videos from Patched, The Video Games Club, The Insider, Player 2 Plays, The Late Game Review, and much more. There's some awesome stuff, so please make sure to go and check it out. For written content, make sure to visit the website, player2.net.au, where you'll find reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, the Player 2 Writers Draft, our E3 hub, and heaps of awesome content, all contributed by some of the best talent in Australia. So please make sure to go and check it out. We're on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au. Consider kicking in a few dollars. At lower tiers, you'll get early access to episodes such as The Insider or Patched. At higher tiers, you'll get exclusive episodes of those shows. And at the top tier, you can join us in the monthly Player 2 podcast. There's some awesome and hopefully enticing offers there for you. And in doing so, you're helping the Player 2 dream grow. So thank you in advance, and we hope you come along for the ride. For rolling updates, you can find me at PaulJamesP2 on Twitter. The website, you can find at Player2AU on Twitter. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. Get hyped for Microsoft at E3 2018, and I'll see you later.